Hey, how's it going, you two-toed Tangrowths? Today, we're going to be playing some games with Blacephalon. Now, I know there is a Blacephalon list that just won Madison Regionals. Trust me, I know. Uh, but I think the more interesting Blacephalon list to come out of Madison Regionals was uh, Zach Lesage's with the 1-1 Persian GX. Now, this isn't Zach Lesage's exact list. There are a couple things that I did not quite like that I switched it up a little bit. Um, so, looking at my build... Uh, of a Blacephalon deck with the 1-1 one, one Persian. I do really like the 1-1 one, Persian uh, tech, though. And as far as I know, that's coming to us directly from Zach Lesage himself. I don't know if anyone else has done this yet. So, uh, you know, sh big shout-out to him on uh, coming up with the Persian. It seems super cool in this deck, super interesting. I definitely want to try it out. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to be playing with today is the Blacephalon Naganadel deck with the 1-1 one, one Persian line. And, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. I'm very interested. I haven't played a whole ton of games with it. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can get some interesting ones, get some cool catwalks off uh, in the Blacephalon deck. First here in this first game, solid start, Blacephalon and a Lily. Um, can't ask for too much more than that. that, that's what we need to get going. I'd like to top deck, um, Ultra Ball or Treasure would be very nice. Cynthia, Lily for three, Cynthia for six sounds a little bit better. Cynthia is also a pretty good top deck there. Oh my gosh, we just get swarmed by the fire energy once again, and pass over to our opponent here. Nope. No Poiples going down turn one. That stinks. No Meowth either. No Ultra Ball or, ne or Treasure is really what, uh, really what we are looking for. That's all you want to find on the first couple turns here as the Blacephalon. Uh, we're not in a terrible spot, but could have been a little bit better. Um, we'll see what our opponent is able to... Pull off on their first turn. They just got rid of a Persian with a communication for a Lele. So that's probably going to be grabbing them some kind of draw supporter. Um, usually they only play Lily for draw supporter. Well, Lily and... I don't know if you really call Judge a draw supporter. Um, it technically does draw you cards, I guess. But uh, not a very powerful one on your first couple turns. Gets way better later on. Once your deck's been thinned out a bit, higher chance to actually have it see it. Have it draw stuff for you. And then uh, really... Uh, the real benefit of the judge is disrupting your opponent uh, more often than not. So we'll see where it goes from here. We're not set up super well to be able to knock this Saru out. We could knock it out, though, if we really wanted to. There is a slow poke. Um, so we definitely want to not leave too much energy on our active as we have to deal with the slow king coming up. Um, knocking out a Zerua would be pretty beneficial to like slow down their draw power potentially. So I think I do want to knock out the Zerua. We'll see what this Ultra Ball grabs him here. And I guess we'll kind of decide from there. Yeah. Once again, best top deck here, probably an Ultra Ball or a Treasure. Ultra Ball for sure is the best top deck here. Um, allow us to actually draw some cards. A reasonable amount of cards off this Lily as opposed to just looking like three as of right now. So at least hopefully our top deck is playable. Oh, now that they put an energy there, we're for sure going to uh, knock this Sarua out. 100%. Oh, no. Not another energy. Come on. All right. Lily for two. Well, we got an Ultra Space. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a rough one. That is 100% sure. 100% for sure. And Mind Blown. Knock it out. Hopefully this slows down our opponent enough to the point where they don't knock this uh, Blacephalon out next turn. There we go. There's a Let Loose of Marsh Shadow. The Ditto could become a Muck, which would become really annoying. It would slow us down um, drastically. But maybe it doesn't, and uh, we'll be fine. They already have the choice ban for the slow poke, so they need the king and the triple acceleration energy. Um, there's the ultra ball. This could be the end of this Blacephalon. We'll see here. Persian and uh, the communication being discarded. There's a Zorark. So hopefully they don't have it quite yet. We kind of just need one more turn to work with. Hopefully if our opponent could give us one more turn. That'd be great. Um to kind of set up and establish some kind of board because we've been having a real rough first couple turns. Um, like I said, Ultra Balls and Treasures what are what we've been looking for. Have found neither of those so far. Um, oh no. Don't get the Slow King. Please, no Slow King. Another Zork for there. Oh no, there's the Slow King. We'll see if they have the triple here. Slow King comes down. And... Nest Ball. That's not triple. Uh, they might have the Dene in hand, though, which means they're going to see a six, a fresh six cards. Um, could also be the triple. Resetting whole, getting rid of our Ultra Space. Kind of expected it to leave play, not going to lie. Oh, and then the last card, of course, is the Triple Acceleration Energy. And then Psychic, knock out our Blue Cephalon. <sighs> all right, all right, that's fine, that's fine. One Beast Ring, and we can take care of this guy. 
There's the Meowth. You're a little late there, buddy. Oh, oops. I forgot to evolve the Naganadel. That one's on me. Hey, he's back. Yeah, that one's on, uh, that one's on me. <laughs> um, here we go. Lily for five. Hopefully, just need one B-string. Take this thing out, and we can go on from there. Hopefully, one B-string. Uh-oh. All right. No B-strings for me. Could hit him with another Let Loose, I guess, to look for a B-string. There's three in the deck. It's pretty important that we get this knockout, I feel like. Um, if we confuse it, they'll definitely flip through it to try and knock us out, and then we could just lose from there very easily. So I think it is it is pretty important that we get this knockout. So we're going to go for it. Um, yeah. There we go. B-string. All right. Whew. That was a little too close, in my opinion. Uh, load up this guy. Almost put him on the again. Oh, man, I'm all sorts of scatterbrained today. Um, there we go. We're all good though. Chilling. Again, it else loaded up, and we got that mind blown for the knockout here. Mind blown. Doom, doom. Boop. Three to KO. A slow king doesn't feel good, but um, it's fine. Goodbye. Um, they can set up another slow king off this ditto, but they need everything. They need slow king. They need the uh, triple acceleration energy. They need another choice band. They need a lot. So I'm not too scared. Of that ditto becoming a um, what's it called here? I think we'll be fine. I don't know as it comes active. Could also become a uh, Persian, which would be pretty scary as well. Um, and they could, I mean, they, they, they kind of need the same situation though. They need a triple and a choice band to do the slash back. They can't catwalk because we knocked out a non GX last turn, so that's that's good. Yeah, we really need them to not uh, not knock us out this turn. We need like a turn to stabilize. They already took away that turn last turn when they had the slow king. Um, yeah, from how slow our start was, we just need like a turn to kind of stabilize. They haven't been giving it to us. No, there's the slow king, and I'm scared that they're just gonna have it. The slow king comes down again, and there's that lily. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll see if they have it. There's a nest ball. We'll see if they have the knockout here. Hopefully not. Hopefully they give us, once again, give us a turn, man. Uh, we are in a rough spot, though, because... Oh, if they two-shot this, I guess we're... Um, they hit it again, and then we go... They have two prizes left. I guess we're actually in a pretty even uh, prize trade the way it's breaking down here. We're in a pretty, like, fair prize trade here. There's a trade. Uh, this Rua just came down, I believe. Yeah. So they did need to hit everything off that Lily Plus trade. Um, they probably have one or two choice band left. They have tr three triple accelerations left, most likely. Some people play the three. Uh, usually if they play three, they play three DC, four triple accelerations. So, all right, nice. We have secured that turn that I was looking for. I think I would rather have the draw supporter. Um, yeah, we secured. We have secured the turn that I was looking for, where we kind of have like a turn off um, of our opponent just nonstop um, pressuring us. So what we were looking for is what we needed since our start was so slow. And these are perfect. Um, I don't even know where I want this one to go. I mean, it has to go on Ultra so Charging up. I think we're just going to take three off the active... Um, or we only need to take two off the active. That's even better. Because we do have the beast energy. Um, yeah. Mind blown. With our current hand, we don't for sure have a way to... Um, like, we don't for sure have a way to... Oh, there's the person that was prized the whole time. I didn't even know that. Um, but that's a super good pull for us to get out of the prizes. It means we can actually set up a play to like chase and knock out a GX if we want. Yeah, so the Persian coming out of the prizes is super big. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, Persian coming out of the prize is a super big deal. They're both their choice bands, so I guess they were just missing the triple acceleration there. <laughs> they had the choice bands, just not the triple. Um, I would be surprised if this Cynthia does not find them everything they need, though. Uh, but we do have a catwalk as a response, which is super good for us. Give us a lot of op options. We have the energy switch as well. Um, so we'll for sure be able to draw some more prizes next turn. It's drawing the prizes after those prizes that becomes the hard part, I think. Um, and we do need to knock out this Persian or Meowth currently um, if it becomes a Persian. And there's a concession. Looks like they don't have the Persian and the triple. Uh, fortunately, we weren't able to use the Persian ourselves. Um, but our, we had that slow start. 
Um, and our opponent drew pretty well from there. Usually this matchup is pretty tough if our opponent does draw like that, but they had a little bit of a slow follow-up themselves when they weren't able to get out the Persian. What generally makes this matchup pretty hard is they can like take a knockout with Slow King. We need to like knock out the Slow King that puts us off on odd prizes um, or can like put us back on odd prizes or like back to back Slow Kings. And then Persian also one shots us pretty, uh, pretty reasonably with Vengeance or the GX with the Choice Band. So the matchup has gotten a lot tougher for Blacephalon against Zorak. It used to be a lot easier against like the Zoro Rocks and stuff because they literally only had one way to one shot you consistently which was through the dangerous rogue but now they have a ton of ways that they can one shot you um and if they play the dugong it gets even worse but uh yeah our opponent i mean we flubbed a little bit in the beginning they mess they didn't mess up but they they drew pretty uh suboptimally later on so it was able to even out and it ends up with us on top so uh yeah i'll take it to another one here up against some kind of stellar wish engine deck um we got we opened the blacephalana deck we got an ultra ball can go for a lele or uh, that uh, let loose Marsh Shadow really will just depend on our top deck. We'll see what our opponent's playing. If I had to guess, Jirachi plus Nest Ball. I'm going to guess Reshizard. Don't know quite yet as I just grabbed another Jirachi. And there's a let loose from our opponent. Okay. So that makes us, uh, that kind of takes away our only decision in hand. Um, besides what our top deck could have given us. So it's going to make it easier for us to decide what we're going to do. All right. Yeah. So it's going to be Treasure for Poipal into a let loose of our own. Um, I mean, we could go for, we could go for getting... The Lele for Lily, and then save the Let Loose for after. Oh, there's a Lily from our opponent. So now I got, I mean, now I have no idea what we're up against. The Lily um, definitely makes things different. Um, I guess Zap Beasts would be my current guess, but I guess they're just not going to show us what we're up against. Definitely want to let loose that hand away, though. It got really big out of nowhere. Don't want them having that big of a hand, so we are going to go with the Let Loose. If it is Zap Beast, we're definitely going to try and save our other Let Loose for later on. Uh, this matchup is way tougher with the Persian build of Blacephalon because we don't have the muck. We just don't have the muck, um, which makes the matchup much more difficult. Um, yeah, it just makes it harder, man. It makes it way harder. All right. Um, another Naganadel is cool, but if it is that beast, I would want to keep this as a counter stadium um, to the Shrine Ultra Ball. Oh, well. Free prize is always good. Nice, though. Yeah, I want to keep this as a counter stadium to Shrine of Punishment, so we're not going to put it in play just yet. Um, here's an S-Ball. This should tell us what we're up against. It is the Zap Beasts. Okay, like I suspected, Zap Beasts coming through here. Hopefully the Let Loose did a little bit of work on our opponent, and they're going to have a little bit of trouble keeping up. Oh, there's a Guzma for our Poiple, though. That's so rude. Um, so we are going to have to like go Welder for the turn to actually be able to take some knockout here. But that's fine. They're at a three-card hand now, four-card hand with the prize. Um, so this knock knockout on Zapdos is going to be pretty good. We can actually Ultra Space for a Poiple, and then we'll probably Welder to that. Yeah. Could just grab another Blacephalon, though, actually, as well. That would be, like, fine. And Welder to him. Nah, these things are harder to set up. We're going to be discarding, like, two of the energy anyway, so... Yeah, I mean, both energies are going to be discarded, so... Getting the Meow set up for that catwalk. And then boom. Uh, mind blown. Both these leave. And knock out on the Zapdos. This is their Sledgehammer turn. Um, but they would need a lot to have a super effective Sledgehammer. A third Lily makes its way into our hand. Um, that's not ideal at all. Don't need this many Lily in our hand. Um, yeah. So we'll see what our opponent's able to whip up out of this uh out of this hand they haven't done a whole lot with it like i said like that let loose after their lily is always what you're kind of looking to do against zappies let loose away their lily um they got so little set up off of it they didn't get any of their attackers on the bench or anything so definitely want to try and take away whatever we can we've been doing a pretty good job of that so far i guess i could have discarded one energy off the active and eh, that's still a little bit awkward i mean using Naganadel in response to sledgehammer is really nice but i guess the sledgehammer probably isn't going to be knocking anything else out anyways so it's really not that big of a deal e power off the stellar wish uh probably not what our opponent's looking for uh, i guess it could be but I, if i had to guess i would say an e power is not gonna be super productive um for their turn um it looks like our let loose maybe did exactly what we needed to yeah there's a Volkner. Volkner is never optimal at this point in the game um, with the current hand size. There's an escape rope, um, so they are going to be able to get a free KO on our Marsh Shadow. Doesn't really matter too much to me. I guess not even for sure. They didn't even bench a Zapdos. They're just getting into the other 
Stellar Wish. I guess our Marshadow might get trapped. Um, but we're still going to take a knockout here with the Blacephalon, no problem. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, there's another Ultra Ball for our opponent. They might be able to get the knockout now, as long as they have another Switch card in hand, which at least maybe they have that going for them. Um, this is going to eat up a lot of their hand. Yeah, there goes a Cynthia, actually. They chose not to play the Cynthia. That's interesting to me. Um, they definitely need more cards. This is not going to be enough to work with. Um, they are get getting in a good spot to actually be able to use the, what's it called, GX, though. So that's a little bit scary. The, um, <laughs> uh, Coco GX. They're almost there to be able to use Coco GX. So I think that, that is kind of scary a little bit, I guess, but I'm not too worried about it. We'll see. Now they maybe don't. They, they use the Ultra. Ooh, they use that a little bit late. Could have used that earlier. They got the Kartana. Yep, looks like they're going to whiff the knockout here. Um, Poiple comes down. I think I just want to bench the second Blacephalon at this point. I think we're going to go like this. This. We're not going to put the Heat Factory in play yet. Need to be able to retreat. And then Lily for three. And now we will Ultra Space to grab. Then again, Adele. And charging up. And then, whoops, retreat, and mind blown, discard off the bench here, keep this guy ready to be able to attack, um, a little bit overkill there, but oh well, Beast Energy doing too much work, um, yeah, so we're in a pretty good spot here, we're up an extra prize, um, I don't think our Blacephalon is going to get knocked out this turn, uh, the only thing that's unfortunate about the situation is we're not in a position to be able to use this guy with Turning Point, but that's really not that unfortunate, I guess, because that means this, the Blacephalon is not getting knocked out, so we just swing the Blacephalon again. Um, and then maybe look to use Naganadels from there. I guess they don't knock this out. Uh, we can just win through Blacephalons. For them, they definitely need to try and knock this thing out this turn. That should be, uh, their goal. But the only way I see them doing that is with a Coco GX, so then we can respond with this guy. And then... I mean, they'll go down to three prizes, we'll go down to one prize. We still end up winning the trade there, so I don't know. It just looks kind of rough for our opponent. They did get a Guzma there. KOing our Naganadel would be super annoying, um, or even the Poipol, um, which it looks like they might go after. They might go after the Meowth as well. And, uh, I guess the, the what's it called is a kind of a bigger threat. The cat uh, Catwalk might be a bigger threat actually than the um, other guy. We'll see what they go for. Now they go after the Poipol. Right, that's a little bit annoying. Yeah, not being able to set up a lot through the Naganadels has been a little bit annoying. But oh well. Um, I believe we have Ditto left. Yeah. So we haven't been able to use the Catwalk at all yet. Um, but the presence of it has been real. It's not real enough, I guess. Um, just gonna do this before I forget. Hit him with the charging up. Um, we could welder. I think Cynthia is just better, though. Just gonna ultra space to check. I should have saved that, actually, to use after I Cynthia, because I don't want to put the heat factor in play just yet. I'm gonna save that in case our opponent does hit us with, um, a shrine. All right, mind blown. Then we were one off the active and one off the Naganadel. Yeah, one, two, boom, knockout. This Beast Energy's been doing a ton of work actually, though. So, uh, despite us not getting a whole ton of play with our Naganadels, uh, getting a bunch of e extra energy in play, uh, the Beast Energy's been kind of making up for that. Um, we're having to just like lost zone one less energy every single turn to keep up um, to draw prizes. So that's been pretty good for us. Um, so yeah, that's been keeping us in the game for sure. They're on two prizes now, which is the Naganadel turn, but I don't think that's going to matter. Um, they don't have a ton of rainbow energy in play, so they can't abuse Mind Blown with it. Um, and usually it's not very effective in this matchup anyway, so yeah. Gartana can still hit pretty hard. They are still at four prizes, so they, I mean, they could get Beast Energy Choice Band. Um, that'd be a pretty effective, uh, Kartana turn. Um, but besides that, I don't see a whole lot happening from our opponent. Um, I should have saved this, the Ultra Space use until after I cynthia That way I could just get in a Ganadel with it. Like, hopefully find Ditto off the Cynthia, um, or an Ultra Ball for Ditto, whatever, and then Ultra Space for the Naganadel would have been, like, ideal. Um, but yeah. So yeah. Our opponent, I think, made, made a big mistake when they chose to use Volkner over the Cynthia. And just instead of being, like, reset and hope I draw what I need, they were like, okay, Volkner, and then get, like, an attack off for sure, pretty much. But, like, it's not worth the trade-off, um, in my opinion, anyways. So, I think definitely a mistake there from our opponent. Oh, we're on Beast Ring turn, I didn't even realize it. Well, we didn't find one, so I guess that doesn't really make a difference, but I didn't even really realize that we, we are on uh, the Beast Ring turn here. <laughs> we can use Beast Ring. 
Um, there's an E-Power. They can definitely get us with um, Coco GX here, but... Oh, no, there's Cynthia. They, they can still Coco GX us, yeah. They have one E-Power used, so they need another E-Power. And they already have all the energy ready to go. They have three Lightning. Um, so if they actually find the Coco GX, um, that's when we might be in trouble. But if they don't... All right, looks like no. Well, no, they could still m make room. Okay, there's Dance of the Ancients. Yeah, they could still make room for it. Uh, they don't quite have the knockout here. They're close. And they would definitely risk losing the game if they attack with it and don't have the knockout. So I think we're just going to see him hitting with the Zapdos here. There's a Choice Band. That's going to be a lot of damage, though. Not quite enough. Yeah, 140. All right, that's fine with me. Draw. All right. Going to throw this out. Um... Gonna heat factory now while I have a fire in hand, because I might not have a fire in hand in the next hand. Alright, we found the ditto. Um Ultra Ball away these two. Get that Persian. Evolve it on the Meow. Still have yet to see a V-string over these two turns. Only a little annoying. You know, I'm only I'm only slightly annoyed by that. Uh, we have access to the catwalk now. I don't think it's gonna matter that we do. We are just so far ahead in this one that that let loose on our first turn really Putting in a lot of work. Okay, so we do play the B-Strings. That's good to know. I was getting a little nervous there that we maybe just didn't play B-Strings or maybe forgot them. Just go ahead and throw those here. Um, and go ahead and Mind Blown. Gonna get rid of these two. Knock out the Zapdos. We're going down to one prize here. Our opponent would need an absolute miracle at this point to win this one. I don't even know if it's possible. They would need something like... Uh, Guzma this, knock it out with Coco GX, and let loose us, because um, our hand currently just lets us win the game. So yeah, if they have Coco GX, knock this out, plus let loose, there is a chance our opponent can win the game. Um, but usually this deck only plays one let loose, so we'd also have to draw like no energy, like not uh, not looking good for our opponent. Oh, and I guess we have Catwalk set up. Um, so they'd have to like, psh, crushing hammer heads, get rid of one of these, Guzma GX, knock out the Persian with their last e-power a double e-power e-power choice band yeah not looking good for um our opponent did persian just not take 10 from shrine oh no i just put it in play that's right i was like hold on no that makes sense though yeah so not looking good for our opponent they still have access to this guy which is kind of cool um they're doing it guzma up him ultra ball coco gx there he is finally showing his face um and our opponent is going to get the knockout here. I assume that last card in their hand is an energy because they just discarded two energy off of that Ultra Ball. So pretty unfortunate Cynthia from our opponent. Yep, there it is. All right, finally, our opponent is going to be taking a knockout here on the Blacephalon. All right, but uh, we are going to have the response. We could have Goose Mud. Um, I'm going to get a little bit fancy here with the Catwalk, though, and get the Welder energy. Just a tad fancy. Boom. To the Blacephalon. And then we got that Mind Blown. For a little bit extra. Whoop. And Knockout on the Coco GX to close this one out. Yeah, so we got really far ahead in the early game. Um, and our opponent slipped up a couple times on trying to recover. I think it all came down to when they chose to use Volkner instead of Cynthia. If they had just used Cynthia, they had a chance. Instead, they went with that Volkner play, which really made no sense to go for. And uh, they got punished for it and couldn't recover. Into a uh, game here. Opened up the Meowth. Um, no idea what we're up against here. Uh, got an Ultra Ball and a Lele for a Lily. It looks like we're up against a Reshizard. Get rid of these two. Gonna grab ourselves a... Kind of just want to grab the Poipal here. But it is pretty important to attach to a Blacephalon. Let's go with the Blacephalon, actually. Winter Tag, Lele uh, for Lily. Uh, using Let Loose would be... It will potentially be super effective here, actually, because our opponent is... Um, no... What's it called? Start. Huh. Do I, would I rather attach to the Blacephalon or the Meowth? I guess the Blacephalon, because I could with like, go the Guzma something next turn. So yeah, Blacephalon. And then we can Welder to Blacephalon and see if we could even want to retreat the Meowth at that point. Um, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, so if they... Because they didn't open a Jirachi, actually using a Let Loose here would have been pretty reasonable. Um, weren't able to find the option. Don't have, actually have a ton of options in this hand in general. Um, that's fine. 
Actually, we'll probably welder to the Meowth, so that way we can uh, burst GX for sure next turn. Um, we'd rather KO the Jirachi, but we have to retreat the Meowth anyway, so we should just welder to the active. Hopefully draw another energy. If not, we're going to go with the burst. There's the Kiawe already from our opponent. Um, so we're going to need a lot to respond to this. Unfortunately, we do have do two GXs in play. We really don't want two GXs in play until we've already gotten it a B-string turn. Um, or until we like have a hand set up to use B-string. So this could uh, snowball out of control pretty fast for us. Um, we'll see. Top deck, Ultra Ball. So Naganadel. Go with the Welder here. Onto the Meowth. Ultra Ball with these two, get ourselves another Poipool. Or no, we should get ourselves the Persian here. Yeah, we should get the Persian while we can. Charging up. Yeah, definitely want the Persian here. We're not going to evolve it yet. Um, but, uh, yeah, if they want to go Guzma Knockout Meowth, we're fine with that. If they want to go Guzma Knockout Meowth, we're fine with that. Um, we just want the Persian in hand, ready to go. Um, but they're not the deck as well in case we get let loose. I don't really want to run to a Guzma or a Lily. Cynthia is always way better. So, yeah, we'll let our opponent decide what they're going to do here. It's gonna be a welder to the active. Not super, uh, not super good for our opponent there. Definitely don't want to be doing that, but probably don't have a choice. So there we go. They might be able to get the knock. They can get the knockout here for sure. It's just kind of their follow up is currently lacking. Uh, but another Reshizard able to GX attack on the following turn um, is pretty good. So that's really all they need. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and on our turn, we're gonna go evolve to Persian, attach an energy, play Cynthia. Look for as many beast rings and Blacephalons as possible. Um, and then just set all those guys up um, between the cards off the Cynthia plus the Catwalk. They're going for the Dedene there. All right. Get that rat in play. Choice band as well to the active. Yep, there he goes. Yeah, not a whole lot going on in that hand. Heavy on the, heavier on the Kiawe than average. Uh, yeah, a lot of Kiawe in hand. There we go. There's another Reshizard. So yeah, they're going to knock us out with Flare Strike here, and then they can go attach Welder and still have the Double Blaze GX as a follow-up. So they are far from out of this game, um, our opponent is. We just need to get as much energy in play as possible. Ideally, you know, three or four Beast Rings worth um, is like the optimal amount. We'll see if we can get there. Um, definitely a lot easier with the Catwalk than it normally is, but um, we still might not be able to get there. We'll find out. Can also look to knock out the Dedene. Eh, that's a little bit harder than I thought. Never mind. Don't, don't mind me. Uh, Persian. Ultra Ball away to Naganadel and Welder, I think. Naganadel and Welder. Yeah, keep the Guzma. Keep the Cynthia. I think we just grabbed the Blacephalon here. Um, can protect pretty much anywhere. And then Cynthia. Looking for another Blacephalon plus as many Beast Rings as possible. There's one beast ring. There's a let loose. Um, so we could go beast ring for two energy. Onto the Blacephalon. And then I think we want to go with a let loose. Look for more. Found none. Um, do have the energy switch. So I think we are just going to catwalk for two more beast rings. <laughs> And then B string here. And B string. It does take a lot of energy to one shot one of these. Here. And then we can retreat. Um, and charging up. And then mind blown. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think is what I want to do. If they want to Guzma Kale Mind to get it out, I'm fine with that. It does take six. Uh, yeah, it's got to be six. All right, we kind of don't have that much energy left. Three in the discard pile. We've got a ton in the lost zone. We had quite a few prized. We weren't able to draw another Blacephalon to B-String 2, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, yeah, definitely unfortunate uh, there. We still have Burst GX to draw a prize. All right, we should still be fine. Um, but we're not in the best of spots, actually, I don't think. 
Definitely not in the best of spots. They got the welder to the Rushy's Art. They must have a switch in hand. I don't see why they wouldn't have just left this in the active. Maybe they top decked the welder, though. That's definitely possible, and that's why they've played it out the way they have. Um, they maybe top decked the welder. Um, we'll see. Yeah, definitely possible that they top deck the welder. Um, nope, they have the switch, so it is going to be a knockout with the flare strike. We do have access to the Persian again. Um, let's see, attach energy switch. Yeah, so we can actually go Guzma knockout to Dene to secure the game here with the catwalk. Um, I think we also could have gone maybe welder for the win as well. Welder doesn't guarantee it. Welder gets pretty close though. Um, but we can just go with Blacephalon. We have the Guzma. So, I, I don't know. We can get the Beast Energy here. It looks like we're out of Welder. So, the Welder plan wouldn't have worked. But we have the E-Switch. Um, so, that works just fine. E-Switch plus Guzma. Unless I'm missing something, that'll work. Charging up. Blacephalon. The Beast. E-Switch. To this guy. And then Guzma knock out this little rat on the bench to draw our last two prize cards with the mind blown. Catwalk coming in super handy here. This is one of the matchups I definitely think that the Persian definitely pulls its own weight in for sure. More than more more so than um, yeah, yeah. Persian is super good against the tag team um, tag team decks. Not as good against Pikaram. Pikaram is just kind of a tough matchup in general for Blazephalon without the Mew. But against the Reshizard. The Persian puts in a lot of work, as we saw there. And that's going to do it for this video on the Persian Blacephalon deck, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Got some good value to Blacep uh, Persian there in that last game. Um, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe. Uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Uh, links for my Twitch live stream as well as the social medias in the description down below. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day and peace.